so that we cross that dealership off the list. That was Jared. He and his wife, Adette, recently bought their very first electric vehicle, and it was quite an adventure. So whether you're waiting for your Aptera solar-powered electric car or you've got your sight set in another EV, you're going to find it a little different maybe than the purchasing experience you're used to. We're going to follow along with their story and see what we can learn. First, you may notice we're using our old-style microphones. Uh, here's our current microphones, and uh, one of the cats ate through the cable. I think it was Buttercup. So what was the first car they set their sights on? It was supposed to be a RAV4 Prime. We were going to put our dip our toe in the water and go plug-in hybrid. And the RAV4 plug-in hybrid is an excellent choice from Toyota, but it was highly sought after. A lot of people wanted this car, and it was very hard to get. Uh, but why did they want it? We'll let Jared explain that. The performance, the straight line performance, the acceleration, the 302 horsepower, our daily commute, 15, maybe 20 miles a day. So we could go full electric all the time. And then uh, my parents, we're, we're in Tacoma, Washington, uh, but my parents are in California. And so when we take road trips, I was like the RAV4 Prime, we can go 40 miles on electric and then another 600 miles on hybrid. I've been here because he used to have a Prius. Right. And he bought the Prius and then like three months later, the Prius Prime came out. He was like, I can't believe I bought the Prius Prime. I want the Prius Prime. And I've been hearing about a Prius Prime for years. And so when the RAV4 Prime comes out, I'm like, I, this is, I'm not doing this again. Just go ahead, get a RAV4 Prime. That started the magic Alice in Wonderland rattle and rabbit hole that we went down. Yep. Or he went down. Yes, the proverbial rabbit hole is about <laughs> to begin, and you get to hear the whole journey. Yes. You know, the old days, Sarah, you go to the dealership, you say, I want the red one, and then you sign papers and you go home with some keys. You know, when we bought our Nissan Leaf, we went online. We went to a website. We said, that's the one for us. I made an email. I didn't really think I ever talked to him on the phone. I emailed him. We want it. You know, here's the, here. just get the papers ready. We'll come get it. That's mm -hmm. it. It was really easy back in 2020. Yeah. It was a way different world in 2021, 22, as we're about to find out. And now they have this super fun thing, the waiting list. I think at the peak, we were on nine waiting lists for the RAV4 Prime. At least half had pretty hefty dealer markups, but I wanted it that bad. <laughs> Months turned into month over month over month, and then the summer came and uh, there was still no movement. I think you got a cold call and they're like, we have a RAV4 Prime, do you want to come get it? And he's like, what's the cost? And I'm like, you're going to have to get oh, here. Yeah. They said, yeah, we have it, you can come. And I said, great, uh, what's my out the door price going to be? And he said, well, you have to come down and we have to talk about that. And I said, what's to talk about? There's an MSRP, there's the delivery, and there's your markup. Tell me what that is and I'll say yes or no, and it'll be, I'll just come down and sign papers, done. And he said, no, no, we only do that in person so that we cross that dealership off the list. That sounded to me like the classic bait and switch. If I can get them on the lot, I can sell them something that I have here, which is not what Jared was looking for. Yeah, has that ever happened to you? Have you ever went to the dealership with your sight set on a specific car and then have the dealer explain to you why the other options might be better? So we don't know that that's what was going on, but there are some rule changes being proposed. We just got this, uh, Jared actually sent us this from Automoblog, talking about the FTC proposed dealer regulations, what they can mean. Possibly we could be done with stuff like bait and switch techniques. We could be done with add-ons that don't mean anything. We could be done with things like not having a full upfront price in the future. And I think it would benefit the dealer because the customers yeah. would be a lot happier. We'd be more likely to go back. Right. And of course, it'd be better for everybody else. So we'll see what changes happen. But uh, who knows? Yeah, I, I think especially the part about having the not baiting and switching, because we have really educated consumers now. They know exactly what they're looking for. They go online. They know what features they want. They know what trim package they want. And that's what they're looking for. So they're not interested in going to a lot and then finding out what they have on that lot that they might want. They already know what they want when they go shopping. That's right. And, and by the way, no disrespect for dealers. We understand that it's been a tough couple of years for them, too. Sure. Their stock's been limited by the, ship, the chip 
chip shortage <laughs> and other things dealing with the global situation the last couple of years. Yeah. So, you know, they're trying to make a living and they're trying to get you in there to buy the cars they have on the lot. We understand it. And, uh, yeah, Jared had no hard feelings either. We don't hold anything against the dealerships. They're just, they're doing what they need to do. Oh, we're holding something against the Northern California dealerships. There was a Oakland dealership with a $45,000 dealer markup on the RAV4 Prime. So it was 90000 Okay, dealer markups. That's when the, the, the manufacturer, let's say Ford, or in this case, Toyota says, okay, uh, we suggest the retail price be, let's say, 40000 And then the dealers will mark it up maybe to forty five or something like that in, in this case. But then with this situation with the supply and demand, you know, with the demand is high and the supply is low, dealers were getting away with stuff like tacking on another forty or forty five thousand dollars. Now he said forty five in this case it was I think forty thousand. Uh, but when you tack all of that on and then you're paying almost twice or over twice what the vehicle is worth, really. And your loan is never going to make sense. All right, that's it for the RAV4 Prime. It's not happening. It's time to switch gears. See what <laughs> I did there? Switch gears. Good one. <laughs> now we're going to look for an EV6. That sounds like a good choice. Yeah, so hey, let's see how it goes for Jared and Adette. It is so fun to watch what they're going through right now. Going to get an EV6. Because for, for us, the charging speed is is the biggest factor because we are going to use it to go down to California and take some road trips. The local Kia dealership said they had one. And I said, great, we're hopping in the car. We're going to be there with traffic, maybe two hours. And he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's not here, here. It's, it's going to be produced, manufactured, and then it'll be in transit. And then I, so I said, well, you said it was here, here. This is like the South African now, now, so, now, so now, 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 Stop that. All right. So I'm not sure what she meant. The now, now, or is it the now, now, now? But obviously the, the dealers, when they say we have one here now, it doesn't always mean we have one here now. Yeah. Obviously, not here. Apparently. Not here, Maybe here, Maybe on here. a ship. Here, not here, here, here. Yeah. And this one was, <laughs> this one was, it will be produced Ooh. and then it will, you know, get on a boat, and then it will cross the ocean. Then it will be here. And it then, would be like us trying to buy our Aptera today. Like, well, it's going to be made. It's going to be made. So you can just buy it today, and then, uh, no, okay. Yeah. Oh. So it's funny. They're, they're like, hey, we're, we'll be there. We're on our <laughs> way with traffic. We, we, we know exactly. Yeah, what. Two hours. They're like, yeah. Already. Oh, well, don't don't get in the car just yet. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. So anyway, <laughs> so it's time to do what anybody would do. Switch again. To a different car. Yeah. So this time they're going to go for the Ionic 5 from Hyundai, which is kind of a sister car to the EV6, the Kia. They're a lot alike where it counts, like the fast charging, the long range, the, the, the performance, the things that matter. But stylistically, they're quite a bit different. You know, the body style is a lot different. Yeah. So now it's going to go time to go after the Ionic 5 and more adventure ensues. Let's go. And then I went on to cars.com. And I found a Hyundai dealership in San Diego. So exciting that they found one. But wait, they found one that is 1,225 miles south of them. So yeah. they did locate a car. That's true. But it's going to take something to get it. I was thinking what that would mean for us, Sarah. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If we drove east... 1,225 miles, we'd be somewhere in the uh, ocean, the Atlantic mm. Ocean, and then buy the car there and drive it back. And that's a lot of work to get a car home from 1,200 miles away. It is, I mean, I don't really care for the Atlantis dealerships anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Let's see how it went with the San Diego dealership. And uh, they had 20 uh, available. And so when I called them, I, I, apo I later apologized to, to the, the internet sales girl that I talked to because she kept saying, yes, sir, it's it's here on the lot and available. And I said, don't give me that. Is it here? And I could come down and buy it. And she said, yeah, why are you? I said, I'm sorry. It's 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 this whole process. Have you subscribed yet? If not, come on. Boom. Please do. That's it. It's, yeah. e it's easy. So it was in the port on a ship and it was going to be delivered within the next two weeks. But it was there and unspoken for. So I said, I will take it. <laughs> that was on a Tuesday. The following Tuesday, 
I flew to California for work. I was in uh, in Oakland. As I got off the plane, I turned my phone off at airplane mode, and it had an email, a missed call, and a voicemail from the Hyundai dealership saying, the ship, they unloaded us first, so it's here. It, we got to prep it, so it, it, it could be ready by tomorrow. And I said, I will be there tomorrow. What time do you open? 6 a.m. in Oakland. I hopped on a plane, flew down to San Diego, and got to test drive the car at 9 a.m. So finally, success. Jared found the Ionic 5 for them, and he's there for work so he can make this deal happen. However, up to this point, he Adette does not know that he is going to be buying a car. He is, as far as she knows, making money on a work trip, not <laughs> spending money on a car. So he's going to have to clue her in at some point. Right. I was getting phone calls at the same time saying, hey, honey, so we're going to buy a car. And I'm like, sweet. He's like, I'm not sure if I'm going to go down there right now because he was in the airport calling me that this all was happening. So this is the actual car, the Honda Ionic 5 that they ended up with. If you want to see a review on this car, we did a review on it with them, which you can watch. We'll put a thing up at the end where you can just click it and go right to the review. Thank you, Jared and Bet, for sharing your story with all of us. Buyers, beware. Yes. It is not your market. No. You are not in control of this situation. What about you? Have you bought your first EV? What was it like for you? Leave a comment down below so that we can find out if everybody's experience is similar to this or is this unique? Yes. Thank you to the members of the channel. Thank we you. We really appreciate what you do for us because of you. I can replace the microphone that the cat ate. Thank you. Yes. All right. To settle this once and for all, I have asked both cats, Buttercup and Rugen, about the micro, about the cord. Rigan, did you chew this wire? Buttercup, did you chew this wire? 